welcome. This is Joa Munyan. Today at the Painter's Talk, we have Lian Barker as our guest. Lian is a sign writer from Australia and she's celebrating her 40th uh, year as a female sign writer. I have the pleasure of meeting Lian in Amsterdam uh, two, three years ago. And guys, I can tell you that she's a lovely human being, is super sweet person, and overall is a really, really good sign writer. So yeah, Lian, welcome and thank you very much for being here. Hi, Yona, how are you? I'm really embarrassed now. I feel really <laughs> like that was an amazing intro. Thank you. Uh, it's wow. been here. I've been it's been I've been so excited to do this interview and it, we finally got to do it. It's only taken us like six months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we succeed, guys. Here we are, finally. Uh, but yeah, Leon, um, what about if in this interview we talk about all your experience, uh, the ups and downs, the lessons that you have learned, and all the knowledge you have about the sign writing industry. Yeah, so let's start. Um, curious, where are you at the moment? I'm in my new studio. So when COVID hit, I couldn't travel anymore, sadly, and meet all these wonderful people. So my daughter and I decided we would find a building, crazily, and set it up as a collaborative studio. Um, so we have, uh, five female businesses within our building, um, all powerhouse women. Uh, so I'm actually in my section. So we, yeah, we've divided the building up and we, uh, yeah, I'm in my studio. Would you like to have a look? That would be lovely. <laughs> so this is my design studio area. Um, I share this with my daughter in, so we have the whole top floor uh, and it's um, it's really nice to be able to hang some paintings and some pictures that I've done and some of my posters you can see up there and a few things that I've collected from my travels. Um, it's a bit of a mess. It's, I'm still getting stuff hung on the wall. Uh, it's just taken it's taken us five months to get this really set up because we've done we've built walls and knocked walls out and we've done all sorts of things because um, my daughter and I have done most of it ourselves. So you can see I've got my design desk. So this is where I do all my design work. Um, my sign writing area is downstairs uh, where it's all dirty. So we've kept this is our clean area upstairs. It's where I bring clients up. Um, in the middle of the room we have this massive timber workbench. Uh, which is a big, heavy timber workbench, which took five people, five very heavy, big, burly wow. to lift up stairs for us. Um, I'm in the middle of running a one-on-one -on -one, uh, gold leaf workshop for a lady in New York. So I've set all of my stuff up ready to do a session with her. But the studio has these beautiful windows, which we get the morning sunlight. And it's just lovely. It's really nice to be in my own space because I worked from home before that. I was actually in my lounge room, which I converted to a studio. So, I mean, I had never planned on having a permanent studio because of traveling. Um, I, you know, I, that was my passion was to keep traveling and meeting people and teaching people overseas. But COVID put a stop to that, like it put a stop to everyone in the world. <laughs> so, yeah. This is the alternative that we've chosen. Yeah. It's wow. Just... Well, congrats for your studio. It's really, really pretty. And uh, I, I was quite updated about all the process. And I love your a gold leaf wall. Yes. And it needs a few more examples on there. I haven't got much on there at the moment. But um, this is my last piece. So I did this. Um, this was my gold leaf workshop I ran in Melbourne a couple of weekends ago so all the students got to do this panel uh, which sort of taught them water gilding and oil gilding and a bit of blending and blended shades and it was a bit paint by numbers uh, but yeah. they all produced really amazing work and it was great to be able to teach students something that I really love doing it, other than the sign writing so it was nice to do some gold leaf yeah yeah. Wow, it's really beautiful. Really, really pretty. I don't have a lot of work on display um, because a lot of my work is actually on site. 
so I do a lot of windows, like I do do a lot of gold leaf work at the moment, which is really surprising because I didn't think coming back from, this, from the UK in 2019, I worked with Ash Bishop. Um, I worked with him for a week, which was so much fun. He's a crazy boy. Um, and then and, and um, Sarah, who's just wonderful. Um, and then I worked with Paul Banks. I got the opportunity to work on a job with him, which was just incredible incredible was the highlight of my my life mm -hmm. uh, being able to just stand next to that person to him who does incredible gold leaf work so I didn't think I'd get any work when I got back here because hand painting isn't as big here as it is overseas it's slowly mm -hmm. having a resurgence but we are still very much vinyl here particularly in Brisbane mm -hmm. Look, down south it's a little bit better but here it's really convincing the client to go hand painted and to go gold leaf so yeah. but having said that I've managed to have at least you know I've done probably about 15 gold leaf windows since I've come back so yeah so I, you know I'd love to say I've got all this work but yeah it's actually a, and funnily enough I've just had a lot of vehicles in the last couple of months I, um, oh yeah doing gold leaf on vehicles or hand painted signs on vehicles and I've got another one coming up in a couple of weeks time which is out of town so I tend to be traveling away from Brisbane I've got people who want me to come up and do boats or vehicles wow. so yeah it's great it's, yeah it's particular because I have also done some vehicles but it's not very common because people is very like no I don't want to pay my car in case I want to sell it but it's a pleasure to work on them because they're it's super smooth and the gold just shine in a really beautiful way. Yeah, it's, it's lovely. Well, I was lucky I did a combi van just recently and it was a 1970s combi van, which the, the guy had actually renovated with his two sons. Um, mm. and, so he wanted, um, mm. and so he wanted gold leaf all the way. But it was a little bit of a sad story because um, we, I found out the day I started sign writing it, he actually let me know the reason he wanted it done in a hurry was that he'd been um, diagnosed with a brain tumour and hasn't got long to live. So he wanted this vehicle done. So I threw everything I could into this vehicle. I, you know, because it was just going to be like surface gilded, you know, with an outline. And I just went, no, I've got to engine turn it and do some blended shades and make it something really special that his boys could remember. It was just really heartbreaking. It was... Um, probably one of the hardest jobs I had to do actually because he was such he is such a lovely guy I and mean, he's still alive uh, at the moment and um his family are just wonderful and it's just like, I'm oh. but anyway so yeah so like I've done a lot of vintage vehicles more so than modern vehicles um mm. here everything is uh vehicle wrap you know they wrap it in all that vinyl yeah uh well <laughs> okay Leanne so let me start asking. <laughs> um, so you have been a sign writing for 40 year. 40 years, yep. Yeah, how, how do you start? <laughs> start. Um, help that I had a father who was a sign writer. So that did help me. Um, I joke and say that I've been around signs since I was four years old. So my dad had his sign shop in the backyard behind the house, which is very typical here in Australia. So uh, I was always in the shed with him as a little girl. I would be beside him. We would go for walks and do ridiculous things. He's my best mate. Like I really have got a very close relationship with my dad. He was self-taught. He didn't do the uh, traditional apprenticeship method back then. He just loved lettering he worked for a company in the UK so he's from he, my parents are English so they both had come out from um, England to live in Australia uh, and he worked for the Austin Motor Company and he used to um, he got to know the guy that used to design all of the distributor um, you know the dealerships and he would design the building and then all the signage that would go on the building and dad just was really fascinated with the lettering so that's where his love of lettering started so that's kind of his background um, and self-taught and then um, when I came along many years later he started his business in 1964 um, and 
yeah, he had an old combi that he signed right up. And yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. Like there was always jobs. As I got older, I would go out with him on school holidays and help him at Christmas time because we'd do this big Christmas windows. You know, you'd put all that bright fluoro lettering on with Christmas specials and paint Santa Clauses and all that sort of stuff. Um, and he used to like outline the lettering and I'd fill it in. Um, I'd go on plane trips with him because he had a contract where he was doing um, a fleet of aeroplanes that were on an island off the coast here. And so I'd go with him on trips like that. So, yeah, so that's where my love of sign writing, I suppose it was just ingrained. But having said that, when I left school, I actually didn't go into sign writing straight away. I just went and got a job working in an office. Um, don't ask me why, but I did. And then I went traveling um, and I ran out of money when I was traveling. And so I rang dad and said, kind of help, <laughs> I need some money. And he, he sent me the fare to get back home. And I, um, he just said to me very quietly, cause he was you know, very unassuming, um, you know, you can travel. Like, why don't you come on board and do the apprenticeship? And I was like, oh, I don't want to stay here. I hated my hometown. I just wanted to keep traveling. And he just said to me, you know, you can travel with sign writing. And that was the hook that got me in. And I was like, and he is so true. Like he was so correct. Um, I have traveled so much over the years, but more so in the last three to four years of my life, I have done, you know, massive big world trips, um, teaching sign writing and meeting people and going to, to the letterhead meets and that sort of stuff. So, yeah, so sign writing, yeah, I have a saying that um, training that takes you places um, is kind of my little saying, I suppose. Um, so, yeah, so that's how I got into it. I, I did my apprenticeship with him. It was a four-year apprenticeship. So you learnt everything. You went to college for seven weeks straight and learnt all of your, you know, bits and bobs. And it was all hand done. There was no computers back then. It was all, you know, we used to cut my, um, you know, mylar, which is like a vinyl. We cut it all by hand because there was no vinyl cutters. It was nothing. Um, and I, I did that early 80s. So 80, 1981 is when I started my apprenticeship. Um, in the middle of, so about June, July, 81. So that's why I'm kind of still in my 40th year because um, I had my first, first year apprenticeship in uh, the mid-1982. Uh, uh, um, yeah, and we learnt gold leaf and, you know, all the, all the things that you had to learn to become a sign writer, but a lot, most of the training was actually on the job. And so I was very lucky because my dad would let me he, I was doing gold leaf in my first year as a sign writer because he'd just go, yeah, just have a go. Like, here it is, just have a go. Um, there was never that, oh, no, you're only a first-year apprentice, you can't do that. So I was very lucky in the sense that he had great belief in me um, and I didn't disappoint him. <laughs> so when I finished my apprenticeship, I topped the state. So we live in the state of Queensland is my home state and I was top apprentice for Queensland for sign writing when I apprenticeship. Yeah. So that was a very long time ago. Wow. Yeah. And in preparation for this interview, you show me really beautiful books that your dad gave to you. Uh, would you like to share them with them? Sure. The people? My favorite one is this little old one, which he taught himself with. Um, and it's the how to write signs and it's what they call they're like a little workbook that uh, so in the UK you were called a journeyman um, when you were an apprentice you were a journeyman and you were an apprentice to a tradesperson um, and so this was kind of the book that you get um, your your textbook I suppose but this beautiful book um, that dad had, I don't know where he found it from, but it was published in 1895. So it is, uh, and like nothing's changed. That's the thing I really find amazing in the sign game is that, you know, nothing's changed. What we're learning now is what has been around for centuries, you know, 
Uh, the only difference is, is it kind of teaches you how to mix your paint from grounds, you know, from powder and that sort of stuff. But it's got all different sorts of, you know, scroll work and stuff. But one thing I really love about this book, and I show anyone who's interested. So if I can find the page now, it's not now. I can't find it. So just give me two seconds. Um, it's this incredible. Um, here we are. It's coming. It's coming. Sorry, guys. Don't worry. I'll probably edit this bit out. There it is. I absolutely love this bit here. So this is telling you how to put a reflective shield behind your candle so you can sign right at night because it's pre-electricity days. So, wow. yeah. so I just I, I just love this book so much. And you know, like it shows you the different brushes and the different tools that they used, um, you know, gilding. So, so the stuff that we're using today is it's true. <laughs> it's late. What, what they had in these books, which is, it just blows me away that this trade is as old as it is. You know, it's not a new trade. It's been around for a very long time. So, yeah, so that was that one. And then he's got this little, this beautiful old book. And this, I think, was published in like the 40s. Um, it's got, you know, really old alphabets and stuff in it. But what I really love about this one is that it actually has this page here, these, uh, this effective lettering. And there's a book out at the moment, particularly this page here. So there's this page and this oh, is represented in this book. So the shadow type... Yeah. Uh, Louise Phyllis and Philly and Stephen Heller have actually recreated a lot of um, typefaces and stuff from various books that were around. So, like, they've copied. Oh, them. wow, there is it. Wow. So this is actually the original book that this has come out of. So, yeah. So, I've got, he, he left me quite a few, which was really lovely. So, yeah. Yes. Wow. Wow. You have very good treasures over there. <laughs> Man, okay. And curious, I mean, you start doing the apprenticeship with your dad, and, and then what happened? I mean, you once finished with him, you start working by yourself or you keep working together? No, I uh I couldn't wait to get out of my hometown because it was a very small country town, which I wasn't really keen on. That's why I kept getting out and then I'd come back and then I'd get out and come back. Um, so yeah, so the day I, I left my apprenticeship, finished my apprenticeship and uh, I, <laughs> there's always a guy involved. I don't know why, but I was going out with a guy at the time who came from Armadale in New South Wales. So that is um, probably about five hours drive from here, but it's like, I hated my hometown. <laughs> because it was a small country town, but I went to an even smaller country town. Don't ask me why, but wow. he was, his family was there. Um, but I actually, no, sorry, I, I, sorry, my apologies. I actually started because he was working um, up north. He was a cowboy. Um, so he was working on a big cattle property up north. And so I actually uh, finished my apprenticeship and got together my, ute we call them utes here in australia so they're pickup trucks the equivalent to a pickup truck uh and i had that all loaded with uh, my paints and my trestles and my german shepherd dog and i was i had a contract to sign right all these tire shops right up the coast of queensland so it was a huge contract um and the day i was ready to leave my boyfriend's father was killed tragically and so he flew back and we ended up going down to this, his hometown in Armadale for the funeral. Um, so he asked me if I could stay in Armadale and help the family. And as women, we tend to put our own needs aside for others. Um, and I said, yes, like an idiot. And I, yeah turned my back on this massive contract that I had that would have traveled. I would have been able to travel around Australia, sign writing all these, these places. Yeah. And a lot of people are probably going, you silly woman. Um, 
but yeah, so I ended up in Armadale and I started my own business. So I was probably 23 at the time when I had my first sign writing business um, with bricks and mortar and set up. And I worked there for about two years. Um, sadly, the relationship, of course, failed. <laughs> and so, because <laughs> long distance, he, was, he went back up north and I was in this horrible little country town trying to run a business and wasn't what I wanted to do. It wasn't, I was meant to travel. Um, and then I got offered a job managing a sign shop here in Brisbane. So I was 26, I think 26 years old. And I got a job as production manager for a very large sign company here in Brisbane, um, where we did a lot of work for big corporations and big companies. And I had, I think, four or five staff under me. It was a huge change. And the computers had just come out by that stage. Like they had, there was a few people had them, but the company that I worked for was selling the vinyl cutters. So that was really the turning point because then everything just kind of went that way with the vinyl cutters. Um, so I learned a lot. I learned, so I'd learned pan skills and learnt traditional sign writing skills but then managing this company I then embraced all of the technology that was coming into the sign industry. Um, I saw a lot of people turn their back on it um, which is a bit sad in a way. I think if, if we as sign writers had kept the vinyl cutters um, to start with in the industry uh, we probably would have still had a bit more control over our trade. Whereas, you know, a lot of people went, oh, that's not sign writing, you know, it's not the traditional stuff. I mean, I went down that track years later and I had a digital printing machine and a vinyl cutter, but I would create signs that still looked like signs with shading and outline and just really good design. Um, sadly, I just, I've always said that the computer is a tool it's a tool to create signage. Like, you know, there are still sign writers out there that do incredible work, but they might use a mask. Um, as a person in business, you've got to make money. Like, it's nice to sit there for 10 hours and do a hand-drawn design, but you're not exactly making money, particularly when you've got overheads and stuff like that. So the computerized equipment is really just a tool. You don't see a builder cutting a piece of timber with a handsaw anymore. I, I have the I have this discussion several times with different painters about using or not using technology like the computer masking everything and me personally I think that at the end of the day the computer cannot paint for you no no it helps it helps you so I mean you don't go to an accountant. And you say, oh, if you are using a calculator, you're a less accountant, you, you're a bad accountant because you're using that. So no, he knows everything or she knows everything. Right. And then they know the accounting, but not this because the calculator does it. That's it. I think it's exactly the same with, with our trade. It is. I mean, it's a tool. It's yeah, a it's a tool. And at the end of the day, you have to use your hand, your mouse stick. Well, I use my mouse stick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, you, know, the, you know it's but you can put your own design into it that's what I say to my students like you know you may design on a computer but what I tend to do is I'll print if I am designing on a computer I find it I struggle with it sometimes now because it's stilted um but I will print something off the computer and then I will draw into it to create it a little bit more hand-drawn and you know so I use it as a basis to then create my own style and own lettering on top of it. Um, and as I said, you don't see a builder on a building site using an old handsaw. They use electric drills and, you know, drop saws and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I think people get a little bit precious about, you know, for and against of, oh, you know, you're using a computer. As I said, if you're in business, like if you're just a hobbyist and you've got time to sit at home and play around and, you know, make these amazing signs, that's great, fantastic. I'm really happy for you. But if you've got a business and overheads and family to feed and staff to pay at the end of the week, you want to be able to produce as much work that you can. So if you can streamline it, then why wouldn't you? So yeah. I think I've never been against the computer. I've never been against computer cut lettering. Um, the only thing I'm against is the fact that the materials 
uh, that we were sold in the early days failed miserably, particularly here in Australia, <coughs> sorry, because we were sold products that would survive in Europe. You know, it's different climate here in Australia. Yeah, you're too hot. Yeah, the sun just, you know, bleaches everything within a couple, of, you know, a couple of years and it's all gone. And we're finding that now with the digital printing game here, you know, all of the digital prints that are done within two years, they're just gone black because the sun has burned them. I think if we had embraced the technology, then our industry would be a lot stronger in the sense that it wouldn't have opened it up for people who had no idea about sign writing and no idea mm -hmm. about sign layout to then buy a computer and suddenly call themselves a, a sign writer. That's where I'm against the computer. That's where I'm against it is the fact that we have allowed people to, I don't know, not make a mockery of what we do, but like, you know, years ago as a sign writer, I would go out, I would scope the job. I would quote on the job, measure it all up. I would do all the design. I would come back to the shop and I would create the work and I would then go back and install it. We did it all. Um, mm -hmm. now the sign industry tends to have designers who do all the design work or you have design houses that are designing signs, which is great. No objection to that. But a lot of them don't have an understanding of how a design translates from a computer to a physical surface. Um, mm -hmm. you know, and I see that daily and I know a lot of the older sign writers that, and probably plenty that you've um, interviewed as well have experienced as well like you can say this is not going to work on this surface but they're not listening you know they're like oh yeah, yeah. Hang on. um i find they'll photograph a building and then they'll superimpose lettering onto the building using an ipad or something which is great that's a tool but they'll clean the building up and take all of the obstructions that are on the wall that happened to me on a job a few years ago we got there and there was down pipes and there was like an air conditioning unit and that had all oh, been wow. photo and they'd superimposed the lettering onto this beautiful smooth wall and shown the client. Um, and then I said, well, that's not going to work. We need to adjust it. And the designer went, oh, well, I'll have to go back to the computer. And I went, no, it's a block letter. It's a really simple letter. I can just mark it out by hand straight onto the wall. Um, yeah. He found that very hard to understand that anyone could just use a pencil and a piece of paper and create a yeah. pattern from scratch and then put it on the wall. So I think we've lost, we have lost a lot of that ability in the sign industry, which is really sad. It makes me sad. In your experience, how was the role of women in the sign writing industry? Because in my eyes, Whenever I go to a little heads or with the people I talk or like uh, the people who who have been like for thirty plus years as a sign writer, most part of them are men, yep. and there are very little females. Yep. You are one of those ones that I know that have been so long in the industry, so. I understand because when I talked to them, I remember I spoke with Peter, I don't know his last name, but um, Peter was telling me, John, I was more like a masculine or like a male industry, just for the fact that you have to go in scaffoldings or like the type, or you, you also knew a lot about like carpentry. So what was the role of women? Um, look, it's, yeah, it was, very much a boys club, definitely, back in the day. Um, I, look, I, I was very lucky because I worked with my dad so he could see, you know, I was quite capable. I always have been a very capable person, you know, and I could use a, a, a saw and I could build frames and I could do other stuff, not just be precious and say, well, all I can do is paint signs, you know, on a window or whatever. Um, women, sadly, I look, I remember when I was at school, you know, women had to do, as girls, we had to do the domestic science, you know, the cooking and the sewing. We weren't allowed to do the woodworking or the design, you know, the technical drawing stuff. That was boys. Only boys could do that. Only girls could do this. It wasn't probably the 80s that women suddenly were accepted that it was okay that you could become a carpenter or you could you could be anything you wanted to be you know um 
there is still, I think, there is still that hesitation um, with women in any industry. Like you will still see that people treat women a lot differently in very major roles. Like, you know, there are very successful women in every role around the world, you know. Um, but my dad, apparently he, he was um, chastised by a lot of the male sign writers in the town, in my hometown, um, for putting on a girl uh, because I was taking away a job from a boy or from a man and it was wow. um, which is just such archaic thinking you know I remember when I first or oh, just before I finished my apprenticeship I was at a sign writing meeting dinner thing and I had an old guy come up to me and he was an old sign writer and he was like, you know, oh, women in the industry, you know, there shouldn't be women, you know, they don't know, they, they can't handle anything, they can't handle all the tough jobs, you know. Um, you, you know, if you had to go out in a job and carry a 16 foot steel trestle, you know, you couldn't do it. And I sat there for a minute and I thought, no, I'm not gonna take that. And so I looked at him and I said, well, can you carry a 16 foot steel trestle on your own? And he was like, oh, oh, you know, couldn't do it now. And I said, well, could you have done it back then or would you have actually had two people do it? And why would you carry a 16-foot steel trestle on your own? Because you're just going to break your back and hurt yourself badly. So then you're not going to sign right until, you know, you're going to end up giving up your trade when you're 40 because you're going to be all broken and busted. So there was that kind of mentality about the fact that women couldn't handle the job. In my experience women make fantastic sign writers and I know I'm going to get in trouble. Sorry guys. Like there are some amazing male sign writers, but I tell you what, women just, we, they we are more particular. We're cleaner when we're actually sign right. We, you know, we just have that finesse about us um, where we are really, you know, quite conscious of talking to the client and making sure everything. I think it's that ingrained part in us as women that we always want to, do the right thing by people and help people and make sure that, you know, we're doing a good job. So I think that's an innate thing that we're brought up with through society that we have to, and the other thing is we're always apologizing as women, you know, sorry, um, which we've got to stop doing because I think, you know, we are equal. We are all capable of doing, you know, amazing work and particularly in this industry. And yes, there is some heavy work in the sign industry. I mean, I was in a, in a sizzle if the other day putting our, our signs up on the front of the building. I don't do a lot of that work now, but I have in the last three years, I've been up on, you know, heights and lifting heavy things. Um, but I'm old, I'm 61 years old. So I'm not gonna go out there now and lift heavy things and damage what ability I'm going to have for the next, you know, I still wanna be doing this in 20 years time. Actually many sign writers that I know they hire somebody somebody to to install there are companies out there that that's all they do is install signs and when I run my workshops that's the first thing I say to people is find out who's doing all the install work because while you're out installing a sign you're actually working at a lesser rate than you are if you're sign writing so you're better off working um, in the job that you're you know, bringing in the bigger dollars for and let somebody else worry about the, you know, the site views and the install. And, you know, if anything is ever going to go wrong in sign writing, it's always with the installation. So I'm over it. I don't like it. I prefer not to have to yeah. do, it. do it, but I don't have to do it to prove myself to anybody. Okay. Right. Just on that side note too, um, you know, I actually, my dad had the first female sign writing apprentice, apprentice in Queensland in 1969. So she paved the way a little bit for me, definitely. Um, when yeah, I did it, there was probably only about three, maybe four females in the industry in Queensland. There was a couple down south um, that I have heard of um but yeah there wasn't many of us around that we, you know when i went to college i was the only female in my class they were all boys in your career which have been pretty extend <laughs> which will have been the hardest moments for you as a sign writer 
the hardest moment? Oh God, okay. <laughs> How long have you got? Yeah. <laughs> um, I, uh, it was interesting because when I first, my very first business I had as a, as a woman in, in the industry, and I, I've told this story before and people are horrified, but I was in a very small farming town, you know, which was very male orientated. Um, mm -hmm. The first couple of jobs that I got were all big jobs. They were all big jobs on scaffolding. I think they just wanted to see whether I could actually do the job, you know, prove I could do it. Um, but I was contracted by a guy to sign write um, a fleet of his work trucks. And when I went to see him about the job, he, um, he was a, you know, an old farmer, big, rough and tough sort of dude. Um, when I went to look at, to look at the job, you know, he said to me, well, you know, I'll, you know, I, I, I'd like you to sign write all these doors on these trucks. Um, but if these signs come off, you see that beam up there and he pointed to a timber beam in his shed. He said, if, if the signs come off, I'll hang you from it. So like, you couldn't say that to somebody now, like it's just not appropriate. But that sort of mentality was, you know, and, and I laughed because if I was to get upset about it, then I would be considered as being difficult or too sensitive or a bit, you know. So I just got used to turning a blind eye to that sort of, those sorts of comments, which was really hard because um, I'm good at what I do. And I, they didn't come off. I did end up sign writing all of them and none of them come off. And actually they lasted for several years later. So huh, <laughs> to him, but yeah. So um, they were difficult times, I suppose, first starting in your own business, particularly in a strange town and just having to prove that you were capable of doing the job. Um, but it was easier back then because literally you just needed a work truck, you know, your toolbox, a set of trestles and some paint because um, there was no computer equipment. It was all hand done. So it was when the computers came in um, and I often quip and say the only people that really made money in the computer, in the sign industry from computer cut lettering was the people that sold the machines because we suddenly went from just having a toolbox and a ute and a dog to having leases. You know, we were leasing computer equipment and digital printers and we had to then have buildings that would house all of this equipment and then you had all of the materials, like you had all of the vinyls that you had to buy to either print on or cut. So suddenly your overheads went from a couple of tins of paint to massive, massive amount of stock that you had to have. And then you had to have staff, like your, your workload would increase because you could, you know, offer, which is great. You could offer all this, you know, options for sign writing, which, you, you know, I went from just working for myself to suddenly having a business that had four staff and we had a digital printer and a vinyl cutter and we had, you know, Main Street frontage shop. And um, and by that stage, I'd become a single mum. So I was bringing up my daughter on my own. She was only four. And so I was juggling trying to be a mum and run a business. And, you know, she would spend most of her time after school down at the shop with me every school holiday she was at the shop or coming out on jobs. And it wasn't because she wanted to. It was because I had to keep working. So... Um, that was a, that was probably my hardest time. I can honestly say that um, things were going great. I had a house, you know, I left my husband and I, it wasn't a good place that I was in. Um, so I left with my daughter and I lived in my office for six months because um, I had nowhere to live um, her as, as a four-year-old. And then I built this business, built a business up and just worked really hard and brought her up at the same time. And as I said, got to a stage where I could put the computer equipment in and build this business and have staff. Um, by this stage, it was about 2007, 2008, which is when we went through um, the global financial crisis where America crashed and all the banks stopped giving loans and everything went pear-shaped over there. And so what happened in Australia was the banks here just shut right down. And I used to, I was able to survive financially because I had a house, you know, I'd bought a little house and I could borrow money against the house to build the business and 
everything on paper looked really great. Um, and here I was, you know, working long hours and bringing my daughter up. But the bank stopped loaning any money. And so I, being a single mom, and back then, even back in 2007, I would go to a bank and they would say, oh, well, we can see that you're doing real well with your figures. You know, like, oh, you're making good money, um, but we need your husband. So they would not take my figures on my own as a business woman. Um, I, they would ask if they wanted to see a partner or a male or, a, you know, another form of income. So that really was very difficult for me because um, financially I had stacked a lot of cards on top of each other. Like, you know, I was building the business. I had the house, you know, on the outside, it looked like I was really kicking goals inside. I was cracking terribly um, mentally and physically. Um, and my daughter would have been about 10 by this stage and an incredible support. She's, she has been my absolute lifeblood with me. Like she's always been there for me. I owe so much to her. Um, but yeah, I, I just, I remember one day she came out and found me on the floor in my office. And I, I joke and say I was in a pool of snot and tears because uh, I'd looked at my bank account and I was, had gone overdrawn and I had no way of finding any other money because with the GFC, people stopped paying. So I was trying, you know, like I'm, I'm buying equipment, I'm buying materials because it's all computer generated. It's not hand done by this stage. It's all computer generated. So I was buying stock to be able to create jobs. And I was getting ripped off by people. I was having people not paying me. Um, I was, I really learned a lot about business in those days. I learned that you have to ask for deposits and you don't give designs. Like I was doing designs and I'd hand, you know, in sheer desperate just to get the work, I'd be doing the design up and I'd have people take that design down the road to another sign writer and use, and they'd use that design. So I learned a lot of things the hard way on how I, I often joke and say I could write a business. I wrote a book on how not to run a business. Um, and like just not having, there was not a lot of support externally for me, um, particularly not financially. And I had a vicious ex-husband who was not a good person. So I was copying that on the outside as well. So it's a wonder I've seen. And so this particular day, I just went, I ended up on the floor. And I must have blacked out because I looked and just went, I've got no money. I don't know how I'm going to do this. And um, my daughter basically pulled me up off the ground and said, what are you doing, mum? And I knew then that I had to kind of reevaluate what I was doing. Um, and it was hard. It was tough. Like, And I was always a very proud person. I never liked asking people for help. And I... In the end, I ended up selling my house and paying debt back because I had like, you know, and it was stupid because I wasn't traveling. I wasn't spending money on diamonds or going out or meeting new partners or anything. I was just working and, and trying to build this business of what I thought was the way you did it. And um, I had staff. I had fantastic staff. But, you know, by the end, at the end of the day, you had to pay them. You had to pay your overheads and you had to pay your staff and, we had to pay our tax and all of that had to come out first. And by the end of it, like once you'd paid all that out, there was like a very small amount left. Um, and so I ended up stopping, I think about 2010 we, or 11, we moved to Brisbane. Um, I kind of muddled through for those years and just, I sold the house and I paid back a lot of debt, um, which gave us a breathing space. But unfortunately then I didn't have a house. I was, than renting, which is fine because now I'm traveling. Like it, I don't need a house, you know, it's funny how life throws things at you. And at the time you go, oh my God, this is the end of the world. But really when I look back, it was probably the best thing that happened to me because it made me shift in a different direction. Um, and so by moving to Brisbane, I then got a job for a couple of years. I got out of, I was still sign writing on the side, but I actually got a job paid the rest of the debt out, got myself out of trouble. Um, yeah. And I mean, I, this is really private stuff, but I, I would have debt collectors knocking on the door, you know, at midnight because I owed money on, you know, I was paying for equipment and materials on a credit card because somebody hadn't paid me that week. And as 
as a woman, I didn't want to upset anybody. So I didn't know how to ask people or get cranky or, you know, yeah. And I think it's really important that you surround yourself with supportive people. And if I'd known probably the people that I know now, like in the industry, like I was doing it all by myself. I, and I think I was too scared to let people know that things weren't good um, on the outside. As I said, on the outside, it all looked great. Like it all looked like I was doing really well. But I think it's really important that if you are going to go into the sign game, you need to have a support network and you need to have a part-time job before you just jump in and do it full time. Yeah, yeah. just to give you that, that bit of a, um, what do they call it, mad money, you know, that money that, that covers all the, the necessities that you need until you get to a stage that you can. Whereas yeah. I, I just went, literally my business just took off and, and the things that I was doing when I was, was just me was fine because I could handle it because I, I knew what job I was doing and I knew what, you know, the processes and everything. And then I was like, oh, well, I need staff. I'm getting busy. So I put staff on. Then you have to become a manager. And I wasn't a good manager because then I had to remember to get it out of my head and tell my staff what I needed them to do and what need the processes that needed to be done. And that is a massive learning curve for somebody who's a creative, who's used to doing it themselves. You know, I used to yeah. dream that I'd told my staff things, you know, and I'd go, but I told you. And they're like, no, you didn't. And I, I would have these really strange dreams that I had had the conversation. So, you know, and as the business grows, the little things that you don't have in place, like proper systems, like honestly, systems is the bottom line, you know, making sure that everything works well at this size, because when you get bigger, those systems can grow with you. But if you don't have them, you've actually creating a monster that literally turns around and will eat you if you're not prepared. So that, that would be my hardest time. Um, but getting, getting the job and getting out of debt and in that time, so that would have been by, by that time, it was, you know, I, I worked for a while in a school, still doing, dabbling in a little bit of sign writing. And then I got a job as the sign writing teacher at the local technical college that did apprenticeships for sign writers. And I thought, oh, yeah, I'm going to be teaching sign writing. And it wasn't. They had changed the whole course. There was no hand lettering. They had cancelled all the gold leaf. It was just purely all vinyl, all digital. Um, and I hated it. It's not what I wanted to do. I really wanted, I had this drive and this passion that I wanted to teach my craft again. And I had dragged myself back into it. Um, yeah, so I worked as this teacher for about nine months and then went, no, nah, I'm going to start my own business again, but I'm going to do it all by hand. Um, and I haven't, it's been good since. Yeah. Wow. Okay, then now the other side of the of the coin, which ones have been your best moments uh, in your career? The best moments in my career would have been, and I, I I say this, and I know Meredith like she thinks that I'm crazy, but the best moment. So as I finished TAFE. Um, working as this teach, sign writing teacher who I never saw any students. They were all online or just, you know, working and I'd just sort of tick and flick. It was very bad. It was like you had to kind of push them through so at least they got their apprenticeship at the end and they knew nothing. Like they, they were just glorified vinyl installers. Anyway, um, so in all, all of that, I had been doing a little bit of work on the side and I'd posted a... Um, I posted something on the pre-vinylite page on Facebook, I think. I had no idea who any of these people were. Um, and out of the blue, uh, I think it was about Easter 19, uh, 20, 19, 2017, I got a message from Meredith um, from the pre-vinylite group um, asking me if I would like to be part of this all-female sign writing exhibition in Chicago. I thought it was spam at first. Like, I didn't know who this person was. I didn't know this group. I knew nothing about it. I was just so green. Like, I'd just been plodding away in my own little world here. Um, and then I looked into it and went, oh, my God, this is, like, a real honour to be asked. So it was kind of originally it started off with just a few female sign writers from around the world 
who were asked to join and then when other people found out they were like yeah i want to be a part of that yeah i want to be and it ended up being 65 women from around the world came together in this exhibition in chicago um in the september of 2017 uh, under the heading of the pre vinyl um uh, all female sign writing exhibition um and it changed my life honestly and i say that and i get i get all really emotional but it did that was the best moment of my life because everything that I'd worked, you know, I'd been plodding along as a sign writer and, you know, playing the game and doing the right thing and following the boys club and, you know, not rocking the boat too much. And then to suddenly later in life be acknowledged for the work that I am capable of doing and being rewarded as a sign writer and, you know, going, you're really what you do because I didn't believe that I really still didn't think that I was that good um you know I hadn't picked up a brush in ages and you know it was 20 years in between doing digital work to then going back to hand painting um but yeah that was the pinnacle of going flying over to Chicago and we only went for a week and meeting all these incredible women I just as I said I can't Words cannot express how grateful I am to have been part of that show, but how grateful I am to have met all these incredible women. Like there are too many to name and they're all really good friends. Like I honestly am so honored to be, um, we had um, Bob Bowenick, but he came and spoke to us. Um, and this was a bit of a, oh, it was so amazing because I had connected with him on Facebook but I used to read his articles in Signcraft magazine. So when I was an apprentice, we used to get Signcraft magazine would come once every two months. I think it would be posted out and I'd pour through this magazine and I'd look at all the layouts and the, you know, the alphabets and read all the stories. And Mike Meyer was always writing stories in there. And Bob Barnett was, and there was all these different guys, Todd Hanson, all of these guys, um, were famous, you know, they were in the Signcraft magazine back in the 80s, you know, and then suddenly I walked in and I'd connected with Bob just through Facebook going, hi, you know, I used to read your articles. Blah, blah, blah. And I walked into this meeting, he was doing a demonstration, and he just looked straight up at me and he went, oh, Leanne, it's great to meet you. And I went, oh, okay. he knows my name. Like, it was just so, it was incredible. You know, this is a person that I had looked up to. For years and years and then to work with Mike Meyer in Amsterdam like um, at one of the Amsterdam one of the one of his workshops that Amsterdam um, sign painters hosted you know to, to work with him and I'm like I, I would joke with him and say you know I actually joked with him and said and I've told him this I thought he'd be dead, long dead by now you know because they were, to me they were these all these amazing old guys well he's, he's the same age as me I shouldn't say that but you know to meet him and to work with him was just like phenomenal yeah it was incredible so so that kind of that 2017 was the turning point which opened up my world opened up the fact that I got to meet all of my heroes that I had followed for years and honestly didn't know that I would ever be accepted by them as somebody that you know was on the same level well not on the same level I mean not uh, there's still people like Dave Smith and Paul Banks and, and Ash and lots of those guys who I look up to still you know they're my heroes in sign writing you know I just look at their work and go I wish I was as good as them like, they're incredible but I think it's good to have people that you look up to as you know, you're really good. You're one of the people that I look up. <laughs> I, I really admire your blending. Is one of those things that is like <laughs> your, your fingers are rich on the way you do it. It's like delicate perfection and it's the transition is really pretty, but yeah, well, definitely. I think. I'm a terrible perfectionist and I probably take too long sometimes on things because I, you know, perfection limit perfectionism is my downfall um i don't know how i managed to be like i don't know where i learned blending from probably from dad obviously like there's a video of him you know back in the 70s when he was in the shed and i was videoing him blending and maybe i don't know maybe it stuck but 
um, yeah, it's something I really love doing. And um, I get people messaging me going, how do you do that? And I'm like, I don't know, like it just happens. So yeah, it's, it's fun. So, Leanne, and then what happened after this 2017? Oh God, um, just everything took off. It was just nuts. It was, um, I came back and I just had a fire under me. Like I just went, okay, this is what I've got to do. I, and I had started teaching my sign writing workshops, you know, and I was, I'd get two people come to a weekend workshop, you know, here in Brisbane. And I get really frustrated because I think, you know, there's so much that I could teach and so much that I could pass on. And, um, but after coming back, I just had this fire in me that I really knew that I, that's what I wanted to do was to teach, teach this craft, like keep it alive. It's such an important, amazing craft. It, it's a, it's a love hate relationship with sign writing, you know, like you, it's it, some days it's fantastic and you love it. And the other days you just want to murder it. Like it's, you know, there's days you want to tear your hair out and you want to sit on the floor and scream and go, what am I doing? I hate this. Um, but yeah. the good days, as you know, the good days make up, you know, you have a client that's driving you nuts and you're like, I just want to cut them loose. You know, um, there's all those things that are like are really shitty in this industry. But yeah, the 2017, that show just, I think it gave me the confidence to come back and go, I can do this and I can be the person I want to be and I can travel and teach and, you know, just experience um, life through a sign painter's eyes, I guess. Um, so, yeah, so I came back and then, as I said, um, 2018, I was invited to be part of the exhibition in London as part of the London Letterheads. Um, and so... Uh, that was phenomenal too. Like there was 250 sign writers around the world all crammed into this Oxo Tower in London and it was the buzz and the fumes were equally as high. Um, and it was just people talking signs and painting signs. And the thing that was really amazed me was because I'd only just started Instagram by that stage, you know, like I had started a page and I thought, oh, you know, people don't want to see what I do put a post up and you know few people would like it and I'm sitting at the bar at Letterheads and I had all these people all these young guys had come up and they'd go oh, you're brush and pen and I'd be like yeah how do you know that you know they go oh, I'll be following you on Instagram you know and it was just this suddenly this world just opened up to me the Instagram phenomenon and whatever it is you know that um, suddenly I could reach people that I had never been able to reach before. Um, and so from that, it then, yeah, well, I met you in 2019 in Amsterdam and that was just amazing. I still remember that night and I think I threw a photo in for you of you and Peter um, and I at, the, at this um, workshop that we were attending. Um, and it's just that, like, it's lifelong friends that you meet. Um, and to go back in 2019 and then to, to do the uh, gilding workshop with Veronica Skilty in, in Copenhagen and, and I was gilding windows in Copenhagen. I mean, like, who does that? Like, it's just, you know, there's a bit of me in another country on the other side <laughs> of the world. This just blows my head away. I just can't, I, it, I can't fathom. As you know, like, you've travelled and you've worked with different sign writers and you go... It's a terrible ego thing, sign writing, which is really bad because, you know, as a plumber or, or a, an electrician, all your work's hidden in a wall or, you know, under a brickwork or something. But as a sign writer, your, your work is on display for people. Yeah. And it's a buzz. I don't know. It's, it's a terrible ego thing. We all have really bad egos in this industry. <laughs> but we do. We light up when we talk about it and when we, you know, you show a job that you're really proud of. There's nothing like it. Yeah, and so somehow the promise of your dad happened. How like did... when he told you you can't travel as a sign writer. Yeah. He keep his word and it, it's a proof of it. It came true. It, it's just, it's crazy. And it was funnily enough because when I, for my exhibition piece for Chicago, I was like, I don't know what to do. What can I do? And I was like, 
like I did sculptural, I did a degree in creative arts when I was in my 30s and um, I did sculpture and printmaking. So I thought, oh, let, I, I just want to do something 3D. I don't want to just do a flat sign. I just want to do something a bit different. So I sign wrote a suitcase because uh, I figured, well, I have training that takes you places. And so that's where the Sisters of the Brush design came up was I actually gilded this suitcase with that Sisters of the Brush. Um, and then that was sort of, that was 2017. And then in 2018, when I was heading to London, just prior to that, somebody said, oh, you should turn that into a T-shirt, um, the design. So I sat down and put a lot more curly things around it and everything and created the T-shirt. And it, that's just gone crazy. Like, people love it. Like they, you know, and it's great to have a T-shirt to swap with somebody else. Um, so it's kind, of, it's kind of nice to have this sisterhood around the world that are wearing this shirt. You know, not only the training that takes you places, but... I think the best thing for me was that, yes, I was running workshops and I had small, but then to go overseas and be asked to do workshops overseas and have larger numbers come in and people really wanted to learn from me, I figured then that the formula that I'd put together to teach was working. And so when COVID hit and I couldn't travel, um, it was my daughter who said, why don't you put your workshops online? Um, via Zoom, exactly what you and I are doing tonight. Um, very technically challenged. Um, the first couple of lessons were an absolute disaster, but you know, you fake it till you make it, as they say. <laughs> you know, audio problems and video problems and all that sort of stuff. But the great thing was, it was the closest thing I could get to being able to demonstrate here, and then I could see you actually doing your strokes and what I was teaching in real time um, and you could ask questions. And so that, honestly, I would have been lost without those workshops because it got me through COVID and through the lockdowns that we all experienced. Um, and so I would release a workshop and they would fill instantly and I'd have like eight to 10 people, a class from all over the States or, you know, all over Europe, um, India, you know, um, uh, Ireland, the UK, it was just crazy that I could reach so many more people. Which workshops do you do you teach? Now that I have the studio, I actually, I'm back doing face-to-face, -face, which is really great. So I had my first face-to-face -face sign writing workshop last weekend here, which was great. I had six students. Um, so that's the, the intro to sign lettering workshop. Um, teaching you how to mark out, understanding letter proportion, um, learning brush skills, learning how to use the brush, because without knowing how to use the brush and twirl it, you can't sign right anything. Um, right down to shading and um, letter spacing for, you know, understanding letter spacing, um, and then producing a, a panel at the end. Um, so, so the intro to sign lettering workshop that I was doing face-to-face pre-COVID then I created it as an online course. So it became a six week course. It's still the same course that you would do in a weekend with me here, but it's over six weeks and it's an hour and a half, one night a week for six weeks. And you're given homework um, and tasks to do and exercises to do. And um, I found that you know everyone that has done it has really benefited from learning those skills, um, and there's a workbook which I've already written that goes with the course. So it's about 45 pages long now. That mm -hmm. I used to work alongside of, um, and they're also an an Instagram group. So every every class that I have taught since the beginning of 2020 still the groups are still open I don't particularly jump into them anymore but people still connect in there and it's been really great because I've actually created a community of sign writers little communities that are in the groups together who then chat and talk and they're uploading stuff that they've done and you know they'll upload a sign that they've done recently and then I'll jump in and go oh my god that's amazing you know so that's been really great it's sort of given me that feeling that I'm still traveling or still connecting with people, even though I'm stuck here in, in Australia. Uh, so that's the one course. And then the other course I started last year was the design and layout 
people. So it's the same formula. It's online. It's a six-week class. It's an hour a week. Um, and it's design and layout for signage. Because one thing I have noticed with a lot of newbies is that they don't quite understand good layout. Um, even though with these books out there, like there's that brilliant book by Mike Stevens, you know, Mastering Layout and different things. Mm -hmm. But it's something that you actually have to do. You have to constantly be just sketching. That's mm -hmm. what You've just got to get a pencil in your hand and just doodle and sketch. And, you know, it eventually clicks as to what looks a good layout and what doesn't. So yeah. that's my yeah. online course. But um, I'll let you into a little secret. I'm writing a book at the moment. So, oh my God. yeah, so it'll be a combination of everything that I'm teaching at the moment. Um, it's a little bit more involved, you know, I don't want to copy anyone else. So, yeah, mine's, it's going to be, more, um, it's, it's going to be called Keeping the Craft Alive, A Beginner's Guide to Sign Writing. Um, so nobody take that title now because I have um, claimed that. Um, and It'll have a bit of the history, my history and my dad's history. Um, it's something that I feel really passionate I want to do just to honour him because he turns 90 in two weeks' time. And, yeah, and he actually came to the workshop last weekend. He came and paid us a visit for the day. He's very frail. Um, he's on his walking, you know, walker. But he was just so thrilled to be there and chatting to students and talking signs. And I got him to sign write a panel. He wouldn't let me post the final panel because it's a bit shaky. He was like, no, you can't post it. Like he's still very proud of the type of work that he does. Yeah. Um, but it was just a thrill for me to have him there. Um, and so this book will be dedicated to him um, from, from, because without him, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing today. Like if he hadn't given me the apprenticeship, I wouldn't be doing all of this amazing work. So, yeah, so stay tuned. That's I'm working frantically to get it together. So it'll have, um, basically, it'll have my intro to sign lettering and my design and layout. What I'm teaching will be in the book um, and it'll have gold leaf, a little bit of gold leaf techniques and a little bit of business tips. Yeah, just a few things on what not to do, maybe. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah. Very important as well. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's, I'm really excited. That's my new project for this year. Wow. To get that and what is, where is going to be available, more or less? What, where, um, where are your designs? I'm hoping to have it, I would like to have it ready to be selling probably July, August, around that time. Um, that's my deadline um, and mainly because dad's not getting any younger so I would hate him too. I'm hoping that I can put a kind of a draft copy together in two weeks time but if I can put a rough draft copy together to give to him for his 90th to say this is what I'm doing um, but yeah so yeah um, mid-year is what I'm hoping for and I may look at coming back overseas in September depending on what the world situation is happening and whether we're in war or we have more COVID, I don't know. But that's kind of my goal. I'd like to get back over to the UK um, and Europe and say hi to everyone again. And oh, I think they'll have another birds of the bush, bo brush, birds of the brush. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a bad, um, that I can all, that we can all get together again. That would be fantastic. Yeah. 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 Perfect. Now, what can I say? Thank you. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I feel I feel that you really opened the doors to all of us about your life, about your business. I really admire you. I really, it really moved me because I resonate with you in in many things that that you told us and everything. As a woman as a traveler, a sign writer, uh, yeah, thank you. I mean, is is the only thing I can say because it thank really, you. really, really enriched us. Personally, I take a lot. It gives me a lot of, um, it's kind of hope. It's yeah. kind of strain. 
yeah. it's kind of yes you can do it um that's what it's I beautiful. yeah is that a, that i just want to inspire people and particularly women in this game like nothing there's nothing to stop you you know yeah. that's what i say to students you just don't just don't listen to the negativity because there's plenty of it out there you've got to learn to just shut it off and the great thing is is if you get a bad comment it's your page your rules delete it don't buy into it just delete it they're not worth it you know yeah. there's enough support as women in this industry now that well, you know, if you're having a bad day, you can you can message anyone. Like, if anyone's having a bad day, message me. I'll talk to you. I'll talk you off the ledge. You know, something that I think about this craft in particular is that all of us, we have suffered everything. It doesn't matter if you have 40 years of experience or four months. <laughs> it's kind of, we all have experienced the ups and downs. Uh, and I think that if you are brave enough to quiet your ego and say to another pair, hey, I'm struggling with this, or what will you do in my shoes? Or what will you say to this person? There is always somebody there that to, help. to help you. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think, you know, and that's what I say to my students too. Like, you know, one thing I do get on my, I get on my high horse with them pretty quickly. And that is don't undercut yourself. Like if you are going to go and start this sign writing game, don't go in and start charging $5 an hour because what you're going to do is you're going to put me out of a job. So you need to find out what the rate is. And okay, you may not be as good as the person down the road, but if you actually start charging accordingly, then you're not killing the industry around you you're actually supporting the industry yeah. um, find people that you admire find people that you respect find people of whose work you really love and just ask questions some people i'm i always answer questions i'm always you know some people say to me oh you spend too too long on instagram or but you know it's rude i was brought up not to be rude like if somebody talks to you you answer them back like you just don't flick yeah. them off and i think you know, find somebody that is going to give you the answers or is going to communicate with you um, because genuinely there are that many, and male or female or, you know, those who don't identify as either, like non-gender, they are out there to help us, you know, find those people. Um, work with them if you can. Hold a ladder. That's how I got to work with Paul Banks. I just rang him i messaged him and said like you know i you're incredible i'd love to can i just come and hold your ladder and make coffee and i didn't hear back from him so i was like oh well, okay that's fine I'm like be prepared for rejection um and it wasn't until i got to london um this was before i'd left and when i got to london i got a message saying oh sorry i was away on holidays um no you're not going to hold a ladder or make coffee i've actually organized a job for you to come and work with me on like what you know so those little moments will happen so you don't be frightened to put yourself out there have a go um you know i have a saying my dad used to say you know you you jump off a tall building and you grow your wings as you fall and that's the th that's my motto on life which is probably a very reckless motto um <laughs> so far i haven't crashed and burned i mean i've probably burnt slightly but i've come out of the ashes on top again but just have a go like the only person who's stopping you is you there's always somebody who's going to be better than you look at me i've got you know people that i admire but there's always going to be somebody who's not as good as you you know and your client that you find they will love what you do and if you do something hand drawn or hand designed or hand painted they can't do that you've got to remember that they can't do it that's what sets you apart as a really good hand painter. If you do it on a computer, every person and their dog can do something on a computer. When you do it by hand, it is you that you're putting into the job. Yeah, yeah. Because personally, you take offence then when they don't like stuff because it's you that's on the page. But, you know, they don't know how to do it. They've come to you because they like what you do. It may not be perfect lettering, or it may not be spaced accurately, or it may not oh, know, the colours, all the things, all the negativity that you get thrown at you on online. Don't listen to it. 
the next job you'll do will be just that little bit better. So just aim to keep improving as you go. It's been an absolute honour to be able to talk to you and to have somebody just, I don't know, celebrate my little achievement of being around slinging paint for this long. Um, it's not little. Thank you. I also love you a lot. Thank you very much. Okay. Send you a big, big hug. Take care. Yeah, bye.